What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. The java.util.concurrent package provides a rich set of utilities for dealing with concurrency and multi-threading. One of the most important components within this package is the blocking queue interface. It represents a thread safe queue that supports operations that wait for the queue to become non-empty when retrieving an element and wait for space to become available in the queue when storing an element. Unlike a standard queue, the blocking queue provides key features such as blocking operations. The queue provides blocking put and take operations that wait until the queue is ready to accept new elements or consume existing elements. Thread safety. All operations are thread safe, meaning that multiple threads can safely access the queue concurrently. Bounded and unbounded queues. The queue can be either bounded with a fixed capacity or unbounded with no maximum limit on its size. Here are the main methods provided by the blocking queue interface. The put operation inserts the specified element into the queue, waiting if necessary for space to become available if the queue is full. Take on the other hand retrieves and removes the head of the queue, waiting if necessary until an element becomes available. Offer tries to insert the element into the queue immediately. It returns true if successful and false if the queue is full. It's a non-blocking operation. The offer functionality is overloaded and can be passed a certain timeout. It will wait for that specified time only for a space to become available. Similarly, another non-blocking operation is the poll operation. It retrieves and removes the head of the queue or returns null if the queue is empty. It is also overloaded and can be passed a timeout and waits for an element to be available to poll. Okay, let's tackle its implementations. The blocking queue interface has several implementations, each offering different performance characteristics and usage patterns. The first one is the array blocking queue. It is a bounded blocking queue backed by an array. Once initialized, its capacity is fixed and no elements can be inserted once the queue reaches its full capacity. In this example, we created an array blocking queue with a capacity of 10. The producer thread produces 100 items, but the queue can only hold 10 at a time. The producer blocks when the queue is full, waiting for the consumer to consume items. Since the consumer will only consume 80 items, when we stop waiting for the threads to execute, we will find that the queue is full and that the producer is still waiting for that queue to have an empty space to continue inserting the remaining 10 elements. What you can see are the producer and consumer threads we just made use of. Please feel free to pause the video and take a look at them since we will be using them in all our examples. Okay, next we have the linked blocking queue, which is an optionally bounded blocking queue that is backed by linked nodes. If no capacity is specified, it will act as an unbounded queue. It provides better throughput compared to the array blocking queue because it does not block as frequently when the queue is not full. In this example, we initialized a linked blocking queue with a capacity of 50, but it could also be left unbounded by omitting the capacity argument. The producer thread adds 100 elements and the consumer thread consumes 80 of them. When we stop waiting for the threads to execute, we will find that the queue still contains 20 elements. Now, let's move to the priority blocking queue. This implementation is an unbounded blocking queue that orders elements according to their natural ordering or according to a provided comparator. So, unlike the array blocking queue and linked blocking queue, which preserve FIFO ordering, the priority blocking queue orders its elements based on priority. In this example, the priority blocking queue automatically orders the elements based on their natural ordering, in this case, in ascending order since we are dealing with integers. Here we are both producing and consuming 100 elements, meaning that when we stop waiting for the threads to execute, the queue will be empty. If we check the output or part of it, we can see that the integers were consumed in ascending order and not in the order of their insertion to the queue. Finally, the synchronous queue is a special kind of blocking queue where each put operation must wait for a corresponding take operation by another thread and vice versa. It has no capacity, it simply passes elements directly from the producer to the consumer. In this example, the producer thread adds an element to the synchronous queue, but it cannot proceed until the consumer thread takes the element. This is visualized by checking the output of this main method or part of it. We can see that the integers are produced and consumed one by one from the queue. This blocking behavior makes synchronous queue ideal for handoff scenarios between threads. Okay, after exploring the different implementations of the blocking queue interface, one question remains. When should we use the blocking queue and in which multi-threaded scenarios does it shine? One classic use case for the blocking queue is the producer-consumer pattern. 
Producers generate data and insert it into the queue, while consumers process the data by removing it from the queue. The blocking queue ensures that the producer waits when the queue is full and the consumer waits when the queue is empty, thus maintaining a smooth flow of data between threads. Additionally, the blocking queue is commonly used as the work queue in thread pool implementations. In Java's thread pool executor, a blocking queue is used to hold tasks before they are executed by worker threads. Last but not least, the blocking queue is commonly used with handoff mechanisms. The synchronous queue is specifically designed for cases where threads need to pass data directly to one another without holding it in a queue. It's suitable for scenarios where handoff between threads must happen immediately. So, to sum up, the blocking queue interface is a powerful tool for managing threat communication and synchronization in Java applications. Its blocking nature and threat safety make it essential for implementing the producer-consumer pattern, work queues, and other multi-threading scenarios. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like us to cover more interfaces offered by the concurrent package in Java. And that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching, take care, and I will see you in the next one.